Shelley. Right. We've been trying to do this for a while. <laughs> it's been a few years. I've been trying to get Julie Carmen. Welcome to my Wow Chats, words of wisdom with people I admire and respect, and who are making the world a better place. Thank you, oh, Julie. Thank you, Shelley. Mm -hmm. I so admire the work you do. Well, thank you. Thanks, and likewise. So um, you are a clinical psychotherapist. Um, you uh, specialize in marriage and family therapy, relationship issues. Okay, relationship issues. And Julie's also an actress and, and you... a certified yoga therapist, and a certified which is how I know ther you. Oh, right. We're, yeah. at the, we're at the symposium <laughs> on yoga therapy and research, and that's how we met, and that's how we know each other. It's kind of an important link. For us. Any words of wisdom for women like myself, or younger, or older, who are just, you know, we're aging and what kind of words of wisdom for a relationship towards ourself? Well, what it brings to mind is traits, like the traits that come through when I think of you or when I hear you speak or watch you with people is vitality. You have enormous vitality. And I think that that is something that we can externalize in postmodern psychotherapy, what we do with a trait is we think of it as outside of ourselves and say, well, when does vitality visit me and when do I feel it diminishing and mm -hmm. when does it, when do I miss it and what are vitality's friends and maybe a good night's sleep, maybe having a thyroid check maybe you know considering bioidentical hormones i don't know i mean i'm just off the top of my head what what encourages and befriends vitality so i think that if women find their value and commodity in terms of traits that they mm. that work well for them that work well in terms of self-care and uh something that they want to carry into the world with teenagers I, and if they switch schools i said well what traits worked well and what do you want to bring with you mm -hmm. so we don't over identify with some traits mm -hmm. that may not be working for us mm -hmm. so i think that it's a mindset that can help us through the different stages of development and aging and maturation. Mm. I mean, I have great respect for the, you know, the dark side of the moon and, you know, the periods of time it just in the natural female cycle when we feel blue or uh -huh. introspective, when we're not that social and expansive. Yeah. I think that that there's a contraction and natural natural ebb and flow to the mood cycles that and I think that when women aren't forcing joy, that we do better. We don't burn out and get so exhausted. Right. And people don't expect us to always be the energizer button. Right. And then that influences relationships. And mm -hmm. so when you're doing your family and relationships, like, is that something that's really important? Is like you first, like taking care of your, of your own kind of... When I listen to uh, the more traumatic a story is that I'm listening to and when I train yoga therapists to listen to um, traumatic stories and then shift into the yoga brain and figure out what in the whole uh, palette of yoga we can offer that will um, be educational and a kind of mind-body hygiene like like dental flossing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we're not practicing medicine without a license, but we're just offering yoga practices once we hear people's stories. Um, when I listen in terms of self-care, I stay in touch with my pulse, I stay in touch with my respiration, and I stay in touch with the solid uh, structure that, and gravitational pull. So my mind, the mind naturally scans things. And when I'm, as a clinician, listening, I'm hearing the content, but my empathic immersion is, an, it goes in and out and in and out because I don't want to get compassion fatigue and it doesn't serve me or the client if I'm continually in an empathic immersed state um, because you can lose some of your objectivity that way. So I stay in touch with my pulse and my respiration and the pull of gravity. 
the weight of my you know limbs on the chair and um, and you know the what's going on in the solar plexus for me is a big area if someone story makes me anxious and I'm not in touch with myself then my anxiety will rush the process and make me more directional and prescriptive than I like to be or should be. Yes, I noticed that too. Yeah. So if, if someone is dealing with massive grief and loss and I haven't done my own personal grief work, mm -hmm. then I can feel so uncomfortable bearing witness mm -hmm. that I will come up with, I don't do it, but the danger is to come up with some quick fix it like when you're sitting with a friend and they've lost somebody and you just have never been there and well have you tried this and that's really not helpful right. I would suggest just bearing witness stay in touch with your own breath as long as you can tolerate being being present with that person and letting them just share that's the gift it's a huge gift mm -hmm. and, and then what like, about for the person like what advice oh I guess you said you're not really directive but the the words of wisdom for then the actual person who's you know grieving or suffering like if they're listening so what would be your words of wisdom for them to be in relationship with themselves when they're suffering thank you for sharing mm -hmm. yeah they don't they're not coming yeah. to you to say why did my house burn down mm -hmm. what am i supposed to do now mm -hmm. i have no idea it's totally presumptuous mm -hmm. of me to think i know what's right for them mm -hmm. it, with all all the degrees in the world mm -hmm. it's the the gift is bearing witness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bear witness words of wisdom <laughs> julie carmen thank you oh, thank you so much yeah. mm. thank you Thanks for watching this wow chat with Julie Carmen. For more of Julie's work, check out her YouTube channel and her website, yogatalks.com. And feel free to watch some of my other wow chats with other people that I admire, respect, and whose work is in line with making this world a better place.